So, now let's continue on to number four. We went over the spirit of truth, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of faith. Now we're going to go to number four, we're going to be the spirit of grace. The spirit of grace, Hebrew 10 and 29. Hebrew 10 and 29. Hebrew 10 and 29. And the scripture says, of how much worse punishment do you suppose will be? Okay, number four. Hebrews 10 and 29 says, of how much worse punishment do you suppose will be, will be though worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, count the blood of the covenant, by which he sanctified the common thing and installed the spirit of grace. Having the spirit of grace. Having the spirit of grace. Having the spirit of grace. Meaning that we don't turn people away. That we have that you we have compassion on people. As God has had his grace is sufficient for us. God has given us opportunities. God has not thrown us aside and just uh, outcast us. And we as Christians, we, we must have the spirit of grace to be able to forgive people, to be able to give people a chance to knowing that people do make mistakes and, and that we should not look down on people. Uh, sometime in the church we have a tremendous problem. I, I sometimes wonder do we have enough uh, People with the spirit of grace in, in the body of Christ. When we say when people fall in different ways in their life, they're, they're very quick to just say, okay, kick them aside and they're nobody and condemn them or whatever. But number four is the spirit of grace. And operating in the spirit of excellence, you have the spirit of grace, which allows you to be able to look sometime beyond people's fault and also be able to see good in them and be, be there willing to be a helping hand to help people up when you fall instead of just trying to condemn people and throwing to the side. Because Jesus, the word of God said, Jesus would move with compassion. The fourth one was the spirit of grace. Number five, you have the spirit of glory. The spirit of glory first is the spirit of shame. The spirit of glory versus the spirit of shame. This is the fifth one. The spirit of glory versus the spirit of shame. Now put them all back up here for you to look at. The spirit of glory versus the spirit of shame. And we go to 1 Peter 4 and 14. And it's basically saying that if you be persecuted or mistreated in any way for the gospel's sake, you should not walk around with your head down uh, shamefully. What I think what bothers, bothers a lot of people, I think, in the Christian world is that there is this misconception that the persecution that would come their way would always come from someone other than a brother or sister. That this persecution would, 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 ne would never come to the hands of a, another Christian person. That this persecution would never come to the hands of a, a pastor or the hands of an elder or the hands of a Someone was a title in the church. That this persecution, but it's not true. You can be persecuted by anyone. Anyone that the enemy can use, he'll use to persecute us. But even if we become persecuted to the point where someone, if we stand up for something, we may stand up for something that's just right in the church. And they, the church will tell you, well, we want you to leave. Get out of our church. We don't want you anymore. You should not have to leave, leave feeling shame because if there was any persecution involved and you were standing up for righteousness, 
you should give God the glory anyway. First Peter 4 and 14 says, If you be reproached for the name of Jesus Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, they blaspheme God. But on your part, you glorify God. So, persecution, whether it comes from outside the door, or whether it comes from within the house of God, from other people, there are people who, who have left the way to, have left one, one uh, body to another, another body, who uh, things have happened in the church, and in the, and the church no longer wants them to be there, and they just and they move on, and they, and they leave, and they leave broken. And I understand what, what, what's that like. But what I've come to know in my years of dealing with that kind of experience, when I left the church I left, what I did was I trust God that God was gonna God was gonna be a part of my life. God was any hurt that I had, that God would heal me and I would not allow any man to to hold me captive. But I realized that any kind of persecution, any kind of unrighteousness that I've done in, in any way, that if, that if, that if I hold up my my part of it as a man of God and walk away honorable, that God is yet going to bless my life, so I, I won't walk away shamefully, but I give God the glory even to the hard times that I go through. And so that's that's giving God glory for whatever, whatever tribulation you go through and not feeling ashamed by giving God the glory. So number five was the spirit of glory, giving God the glory even in the harder time that you have in life. We're going to do one more, and then we'll do the next other one in the part two. Now this one is the spirit of meekness. The spirit of meekness. The spirit of meekness. The spirit of meek the spirit of meekness, which is one of the which is one of the fruits. 